1965 was a year of exciting football at Iowa State, a season that was filled with long runs, rugged play, and tremendously exciting performances. As Coach Stapleton reviewed the year's films, he found it was a year when blocking was so crisp, many fans watched that instead of the flight of the football. Wide open football, passing from the end zone, daring play choice, all combined to keep Iowa State fans in a constant state of wondering, what next? What did they do next? Well, let's get going with one of the plays that had fans on their feet. Les Webster, sophomore tailback, could both block and run. Against the University of the Pacific, he ran what was called a Webster Special, a quick pitch from Tim Van Galder with good blocking from Dick Shafroth and Larry Brazon, and Webster was free for a 47-yard scoring romp, and the Cyclones had the Tigers under control. But passing was to be the trademark of the Cyclones in 1965, and here Van Galder and Epi Barney, the top passing combination in the Big Eight, combined for a gain. One thing to watch for in the passing attack was the great protection given Van Galder. Don't think that this one didn't thrill and scare the fans as Tom Bush scored on Van Galder's pass off bootleg action. At full speed, Bush takes the pass and just misses the goalpost for another score against the University of Pacific. Epi Barney caught 35 passes for 495 yards to lead the Big 8 Conference. Here's one of those 35 catches that gave him the loop championship. Gary King supplied good speed and quickness to the Cyclone attack all year and is shown here picking up good yardage on a fine play. Tony Baker and fullback power were synonymous this year. Baker combines good speed and size as a fullback threat. Behind good protection, Quarterback Tim Van Galder connects with Tom Bush for another Cyclone gain. Bush, incidentally, was the number four pass catcher in the Big Eight. Sophomore Willie Robinson was explosive up the middle from his fullback position and gave the Cyclones a fine first year of football. Again using fine pass protection, Van Galder hit George Maurer over the middle. Maurer, as you will see, was a great clutch receiver. This time, Van Galder bootlegged and then found a tiny opening to connect with Maurer, who hauled in 19 catches during the year. Van Galder passes from the cup this time, but the result is the same, a completion to Tom Bush. Here's that Webster special we mentioned before with the big sophomore running right and getting fine blocks from tackle John Chisholm and fullback Tony Baker. Van Galder and Barney team up again to add to Iowa State yardage against the University of Pacific. Van Galder gives the quick pitch to Webster, already in motion to his right. Webster gives the youngsters who attended the cheering clinic something to yell about here, moving to the two-yard line. Willie Robinson was something of a dive specialist for the Cyclones this year as he shows here getting another touchdown in the first home game. Webster and Robinson tied for the scoring leadership last year. Big Les bangs in from the four yard line for six of his 30 points. Running helped the passing, but the pass threat also aided players like Webster by loosening the defense for this sweep against the University of the Pacific. Against Nebraska, Webster had one of his fine days, running with great power against the fine Cornhusker defense. This one gained six yards. Tony Baker is a fullback who can smash up the middle or go outside with halfback speed. This one gained 10 yards against Nebraska. Webster continued his fine running with this sweep, taking advantage of good blocking as well as his own ability. Power was among Webster's assets as a player. Power he shows here for another Cyclone gain of nine yards. Most passers don't like to run, but Van Galder kept foes off balance with his ball carrying from rollout action, this time for five yards. He could use interference to good advantage and then go on his own when he had to. Here's that quick pitch again with Webster collecting another six yards for Iowa State. Webster was the workhorse for the Cyclones, carrying the ball 137 times. This time he was good for nine yards in the game at Lincoln. When a first down was needed, 
Van Galder liked to throw just far enough to get it, as he does on this five-yarder to Barney. Tony Baker and Dennis Storey supplied the blocks on this sweep as Webster gained four. Webster was right back at it again on the next play, following his interference well for a five-yard gain. Gary King was a spot player for Iowa State, and this was the spot for him to team with Van Galder for a 13-yard gain on a flare pass. Tom Bush was the target this time. He picked up five yards on Van Galder's throw. King was back in action at tailback and good for eight yards against Nebraska. King and Van Galder again. This time the pass play was good for seven yards, just shy of the first down, but King got it a play later. Van Galder liked to throw the bomb and used it at Kansas to good advantage. On this one, from good protection, he hit Tom Bush. The play covered 44 yards to the Jayhawk 11. Van Galder daringly called this near-naked reverse right after his toss to Bush and swept left end for the opening score against Kansas. He took full advantage of blocking by both Webster and Story. Later in the Kansas game, the Jayhawks stiffened and brought Van Galder face to face with a third and 25 situation. Here was his answer, the bomb to Epi Barney, who took the perfect pass in stride and raced in for a score. The play covered 53 yards. Kansas got back in the game to trail 14 to seven, so it was up to Van Galder and his passing again. This time he hit Webster with the short toss and Big Les broke tackles to make a delayed bomb of the play. This one set up the clinching score for Iowa State. Webster waited a couple of plays, but finished out the series for the score that made it 21 to seven in the win over Kansas. Tim Van Galder looked for Tom Bush on this one, and the fine young sophomore took it for a first down. Willie Robinson hit back to the weak side here with Dennis Story, John Chisholm, Les Webster, Dick Kasperic, and Epi Barney leading the way. Van Galder was not only the best passer in the Big Eight, he was the total offense leader as well. Here is one reason, with Webster, Bill Brooks, Barney, and Robinson getting him started, and a convoy of white shirts ending it. He turned the Jayhawk end for 30 yards on this play. On a quick pass from Van Galder, Epi Barney shows a move of his own and picks up 13 yards against Colorado at Boulder. Tony Baker was the end man on this quick pitch from Van Galder and did some power running on his own for 11 yards and a first down. Behind his usual good pass protection, Van Galder looked to Barney on this one and Epi again added some fine running to stretch the play to 26 yards. Trailing seven to nothing at Colorado, Van Galder got the tying touchdown drive going with this rollout pass to Gary King, good to the Buffalo 12-yard line. Van Galder made full use of King's explosiveness in diving him to the Colorado 2 behind blocks by Shafroth and Barney. Watch the young Colorado rooters in the background as George Maurer makes a diving catch of this fourth down play for six points. Balkovec kicked the tying point a moment later. Iowa State started its drive for a final three points against Colorado with this 11-yard gainer by Van Galder running from bootleg action. Willie Robinson moved the ball closer to the CU goal line with this five-yarder down the middle. Steve Balkovec kicked this field goal, good for 34 yards to give the Cyclones a 10-7 lead. Balkovec's kicking, punts, kickoffs, and field goals were mighty important to the Cyclones all season long. He gave his team a big lift with that big right foot. Against Missouri, Van Galder hit Barney on this hook. That was Missouri's All-American defensive back, Roland, who couldn't hold Barney as he squirmed to the three. Les Webster, with a great second effort, fought his way into the end zone against Missouri. This was the first time in 10 games that the Tigers had been scored on on the ground. 
Maurer could always be depended upon to catch the tough ones. And with three men on him here, he did it again. Van Galder needed a first down again, and it was Tom Bush who got the necessary nine yards on this sideline pass to move nearer the Tiger goal. Sometimes a runner just has to do it on his own. And with 283 pound Russ Washington in pursuit, Webster makes his way for a 14 yard gain to the Missouri four yard line. This was another third down situation that Van Galder and Barney turned into a first down with this quick pass. Tony Baker was always a threat on the draw play, once going 77 yards for a score on it. This one was good for 13 yards. Here is another time when Epi Barney took a short toss from Van Galder and turned it into a good gain with fine running. This was another of those tough plays that George Maurer made in every game. He took the pass from Van Galder and made it cover 31 yards before being hauled down. This is the start of a four play series that was to cover 80 yards for a score against Oklahoma State. On the first play, Robinson took full advantage of blocking by Webster for a 30 yard gain. Webster added 10 more yards with this smash right up the middle of the Oklahoma State line. Les came right back for four yards at right tackle to set up the scoring play. With excellent pass protection by the Cyclone line, Van Galder took his time hitting Webster who was all alone in the middle of Cowboy secondary. He raced in on a play that covered 36 yards. Epi Barney did a fine job of juggling the ball safely on this toss from Van Galder for a gain of eight yards. Note that protection again as Van Galder hits Bush on a sideline pattern good for another eight yards. Willie Robinson is the ball carrier on this fullback power play that gained five for the Cyclones. Again, it's the top passing combination in the Big Eight. Van Galder to Barney. And this time it's good for 20 yards and the start of the first touchdown drive for the Cyclones. Barney makes a fine leaping grab of this one from Van Galder. The big end has great control and speed, a handy combination in the Cyclone style of attack. Just to vary things a bit, Van Galder sent Barney across the Oklahoma State secondary for this play, good for 14 yards. With the Cowboys loosened up by the passing, Van Galder sent Robinson around end for 15 yards, with Webster supplying the big block. Tim Van Galder got into the running act again on this keeper at right end. With that block from Webster, he moved 11 yards to put the ball on the 11. Les Webster had another try, and battled his way through to the Oklahoma State three yard line, a gain of four. With just over a minute left in the half, Van Galder again turned to Willie Robinson for one of his fine dive plays. Willie went into the end zone over left tackle, leaving Iowa State down by three at the half. Van Galder to Barney was almost a monotonous call during the fall, but not to Cyclone fans. They like plays like this one that gained 11 yards. Same passer, same receiver, same result on this hook pass play. Van Galder to Barney. For variation, Van Galder called on fullback Willie Robinson, and the swift sophomore swept left end for 13 yards on a good run. Now was the time Van Galder decided to win the game. He called for a rollout that looked like pass action, but he kept the ball and moved behind excellent blocks by Willie Robinson, Les Webster, Dick Shafroth, and Tom Bush. This combination produced a 32 yard touchdown play that won the game 14 to 10. Van Galder again used Barney as his target on this play against the Sooners of Oklahoma, picking up nine yards. Trailing by 14 at the half against the Sooners, Van Galder wasted no time in getting on the scoreboard in the second half. After setting the Sooners up with a series of line plays, he sent swift Tom Bush deep over the middle and hit him in the open. Bush simply outran the defense from that point on for an 82 yard scoring play. As soon as the Cyclones got the ball back, Van Galder again went for the long gainer but with a twist. He flared Gary King and connected about 10 yards deep. 
King then maneuvered his way to the Sooner seven yard line. This is another of the first down passes caught by Tom Bush that led to a Cyclone score. Is Van Galder tough despite his spidery build? Well, Carl McAdams, the Sooner All-American linebacker, whacked him good here, and up he comes after a four-yard gain. Robinson was called on on a fullback fly and responded with another workmanlike run that netted the Cyclones 11 yards over right tackle. Keeping the drive going, Van Galder rolled out at left end to turn in an excellent run, good for 17 yards and a first down to the Sooner 15. Here was that fullback fly again with Willie Robinson picking up seven yards this time to leave the Cyclones a short yard for the first down. Van Galder took care of the first down on this rollout move to the four. A penalty put the ball on the two. Les Webster tried right tackle but could only get half the distance before Burkett stopped his drive. With a yard to go, yep, it was Willie Robinson taking a dive into the Sooner end zone for six points. Iowa State is going to take just two plays, counting this Oklahoma punt to score again. Sophomore Cal Lewis, kingpin of the Cyclone deep defense, took Ringer's punt on his own 34. He combined blocking and excellent running to haul the ball back to the Sooner 32, a 34-yard return. Here comes that flare pass again, and Gary King, once from Norman, Oklahoma, outruns the Sooners for a 32-yard scoring play. Van Galder and his sophomore wingback Tom Bush hooked up on another fine pass play against the Sooners on a day that saw Tim get 148 yards in the air with Bush being on the receiving end of 103 of them. At New Mexico, Van Galder and Bush were right back at it. With a beautiful fake, Van Galder set up the bomb on a perfect toss and Stan Quintana simply could not reach Bush. Les Webster took the handoff from Van Galder on this well-executed crossbuck. Next, Van Galder faked the same play and then dropped back to connect with Barney to the Lobos 12-yard line. Webster swung right end on this one for the Cyclones. Another big try by the sophomore tailback. Van Galder called for the scissors action on this play that wound up with Bush going over left tackle for seven yards. Tim Van Galder was throwing again with Tom Bush as his target. The play picked up 10 yards and a first down. Dependable George Maurer, the Cyclone tight end, is shown here getting another aerial from Big 8 passing champion Tim Van Galder. Both Van Galder and Barney liked the look-in pass and they collaborated on it here to gain 19 yards. When the blocking is a shade off on a play, a good back runs his own interference, and that's just what Les Webster does here for a 10-yard gain and a first down. Master of all passing forms, Van Galder turned to the jump pass on this one. Barney took it for a total gain of 22 yards. Van Galder had Gary King flaring again and hit him in a hurry. The quick-moving tailback turned in an excellent job of running to put the ball on the low bow three, a gain of 46 yards. George Maurer was back at it again on this one, taking a hook pass from Van Galder right down the middle. Tom Bush, picked as the outstanding Cyclone sophomore player for 1965, takes the scissors handoff and goes over left guard for five yards. Van Galder looks down the middle again to find George Maurer. It's another of his 19 catches, a number that placed him sixth among Big 8 receivers. George Maurer again. The steady junior was always ready, always covered, and nearly always catching the ball. Kansas State was the final home foe for the Cyclones. Willie Robinson opens the action, taking a pitch out to sweep left end for eight yards. It was Webster's turn next and he moved over left tackle for seven yards. Willie Robinson swept right end on this play and used a good block by Les Webster to make the play go for 20 yards. Finally, Van Galder turned Tony Baker loose at left end. Baker got good blocks from Webster, Dennis Story, and George Maurer to go in for the first score of the game. 
Van Galder and Maurer were going to have a great day against Kansas State. This rifle shot was good for 13 yards. Using bootleg action, Van Galder rushed a shot to Bush. The fine young sophomore added seven yards to the throw to move the ball to the Kansas State eight-yard line. Needing four for a first down, Webster gets the call on a swipe at right tackle and gets five yards. Here comes another 13-yarder to tight end George Maurer. Makes you wonder how many he could catch as a spread end, but he's too tough in this spot to shift. Tony Baker was tough all year on the draw play, and this 10-yard gainer was typical of his efforts when given the ball. Barney, like Maurer, had a fine receiving day. Here comes Baker again. He and Van Galder faked well together to make the draw a most effective play all year. Les Webster shot through right tackle to pick up eight yards, moving the ball to the K-State 11. Again, it was Webster, and this time he added six yards to a total that was to reach 498 for his sophomore year. Willie Robinson aided in crossing up the Wildcats, and went into the end zone for his fifth touchdown of the season. Robinson had a fine sophomore year, ranking second in yards gained among Cyclone backs. Given plenty of time by a fine pass-blocking line, Van Galder finds Epi Barney, this time on a play good for 14 yards. Baker and Van Galder combine once more on a draw play to gain 10 yards and set the ball on the K-State 26. It was George Maurer's turn again, and the rugged junior end came through with a 14-yard play for another first down. Van Galder was back with his top pass catcher for this one, hitting Barney with a quick toss. Barney added enough running to bring the ball 18 yards downfield. Tom Bush, rugged player that he is, must have felt this one when Martin tackled him after taking an 11-yard pass from Van Galder. Gary King is the target on this one. The quick sophomore is hard to corral in a situation like this, and he gained 35 yards before being forced out of bounds. Maurer had to reach for this one, but in the end it was good for 13 yards and a first down at the K-State 10. Willie Robinson wasn't so bad on the draw play himself, and here he is shown gaining seven yards to put the ball on the three-yard line. Van Galder had a great day, he passed for 293 yards, ran for 51 more, totaling 344 yards, the best mark in the Big 8 for the year. Here he adds three yards and a touchdown with a spectacular somersault into the end zone. It was his best day by far, and the best ever by a Cyclone. Just to show he could still do the long ones too, Van Galder turned this rollout into a 34-yard gain. Tim weighed only 170 pounds, but that never bothered him when he headed upfield. Here's one of the best runs of the year. The kickoff went to Tom Bush on the 11-yard line. He swept across field and headed home. He was cut off at times, but simply outmaneuvered opponents on his way to the end zone. Bush wasn't through with that one big display, however. Moments later, he worked the scissors play to run 22 yards into the end zone. Van Galder was zeroing in on his number one receiver again, and Barney helped things along with a better than good run to pick up 18 yards. Want a gambling quarterback? Try this one then. Backed up against the goal line, Van Galder fires a short one out to Les Webster, and it eventually becomes a 23-yard gain. Not a bad season, was it? Full of excitement and great football, wasn't it? The Iowa State students thought so, too. Before the Cyclones could leave the field after that final home game, the Pep Council and the student body presented this trophy 
just to let them know how they felt about the Cyclones. Their team, you know. <laughs>